Welcome back gamers. In this week's video, we bring you the big boy Revenant. And we're not a potato like the rest of you. We spent 1,000 games playing Revenant with 1,000 pounces to ensure we were one of the best Revenants in NA. Did we succeed? Most likely not. But did we gain enough information for me to teach you how to play this legend? Yes, we did. So sit back and let us walk you through all the legend's abilities, how you can maximize on Revenant because you are not very good and you want to be better at the game. And Rev is a level 99 raid boss when his ult's activated, so let's walk you through it. Now, if you've never played Revenant, I expect you to watch this part. If you have, you can skip to the next part where we walk you through exactly how to play him. This part, we're going to cover all of his abilities and how they should be used. His passive is Assassin's Instinct. This is basically two passives tied into one. The first one, you will highlight any enemies that are behind any type of objects who have 40 or less health. On top of that, all of your teammates can also see these enemies as well. On top of that, you can climb walls more than six times as high. We've got an example. We'll walk you through that. And he can also crouch walk at an increased speed. His tactical is Shadow Pounce, which I find a little bit better than Octane's pad. You have a whole lot more mobility of movement with this. Tons of examples, but you have the Pounce. This is between 20 and 50 meters and mostly should be used going forward, not up in the air. And last, his ultimate, Forge Shadows, which creates a shroud of 75 HP that will deplete over time. Now you can make plays with this with the perk system. We're going to talk about that. Let's get into that right now. All right, you smelly potatoes. Here's his perk system. Level 1, reduces cooldown by 30% or murder machine, call out nearby enemies. This is mainly situational, but most time we're taking the 30% cooldown to have his ultimate up as quick as possible for that third party. For his level 3, we mainly took the minus 5 second cooldown on his tack jump. Pair this with the gold helmet, it's a 15 second jump. For you lazy potato sacks don't want to run around the terrain, he's your ultimate legend because guess what, he can climb walls. This is also so for getting high ground or going up a wall people don't expect you to be able to make, so it's great. Also, if you fall off or hit another piece of the terrain, you'll start climbing again. So don't be lazy, just climb the wall and surprise your enemies. It's that easy. Look how easy. Like I said earlier, you don't want to jump directly in the air because it's so useless. You want to make sure you're always using your jump pretty much low to the ground because you can make big, big plays. Not only that, if you're an aggressive player, nothing is worse than getting fried and then hearing this roar coming at you from far across the map, okay? Got a whole lot more plays you can make. You use it more forward versus up in the air. As well, you can see in this example, another great reason for this pounce is to reposition your team here at the end of this circle. We know they're underneath us, so I'm just going to reposition myself without putting my team or myself in danger. Now, granted, I know most of your W keys, and guess what? You just want to get to the fight. But in some situations, this allowed you to redirect your positioning along with your teams to help for an easy win. I mean, look at this guy. He's like, where did he go? Where? There, I'm right here, and you're getting fried, potato sack. Now, those of you who are into the movement, this is the legend you want to play. The gap closing is phenomenal. The getting away if you're in a dangerous spot is phenomenal. And most of the time, you can use it to redirect yourself in your positioning to make sure you either hit that kill or you save yourself from taking so much painful damage. Some of the alt clips are towards the end of this, but I really found the alt for the most part used when getting into a team fight. There was very rarely that I feel like I was taking enough damage where I just popped it to get that extra health to get away. Again, we have some examples of that. For the most part, I use this ultimate to really initiate every single fight. Now listen, this is our 15th in the series of learning every single legend at the highest level. We would love it if you would drop in the comments below which legend do you want to see next, which means you may have to go to the main page. You may have to hit the subscribe button. While you're at it, you can like this video, but drop a comment below. Let me know which legend you want us to do next or what are some tips you have for Rev that we can include and pin as the comment. And no, we may not be that famous yet, and I understand you don't want to take the time to comment, but however, some of you I know are demons at Rev, and I'm sure someone could take your comment and reach an ALGS status by doing so. So stop what you're doing, like and subscribe. Every week we drop a video. They're not always legend reviews. Sometimes they're just how to get better at this game. And listen, we greatly appreciate your time. You're the best, dude. So if you're one of those octane goobers who likes to leave your team and run across the map and loot and then die and wonder where your teammate was, you can pick this legend and guess what? You can pounce in, get fried and take a ton of damage and then guess what you could do? You could pop your ultimate and get away. Also, the reason I think I like this legend a little more than Octane is you can take his tack off of any type of zipline anywhere. So whether you're climbing or whether you're taking a zipline, you can pop this 
tactical and get across the map. And then you know what's better than that is being Superman. You can't be Superman, but you can be Revenant Man. If you're a person that knows the maps very, very well, most of the jump towers and some of the zip lines that you have always connect but not directly connect to a building so you can always have your tack loaded up and then land on top of whatever poi you want without taking any extra steps remember you're lazy you're a lazy person that's why you're watching this video if you weren't lazy you would have been in the firing range learning this legend on your own but yet you're here and you're here because i have the skill set that you need to become a master now, one of the other reasons I really, really like this legend is that I find myself very aggressive, but also I put myself in a position at times that is not great. That's on me, pal. That's just on me. I'm sorry. I'm not the best. Here, I land with three other squads, and now I'm just Outski Badowski. You see that? And I'm not taking any damage, okay? So you can play aggressive, and you can also find a way to keep yourself in a safe position just by utilizing his attack jump as much as possible. That's why we always went with the cooldown one, because having this thing up every 15 seconds almost is vital to making sure that you do not get punished or you can punish the enemy. Not to mention, still people love to either play lifeline or conduit, and he is an ideal teammate. So if you feel that you have someone that's willing to play support and you have the ability to play this legend, this is a easy way to make one of the best team comps right now currently in apex we didn't get any solo clips in here because no one's really impressed with solo but i will tell you this legend in solos is phenomenal so if you have not cracked your 20 bomb yet on a legend this is the one you want to do it with your ability to use your shroud in a 1v1 is phenomenal on top of that you can get around this map super super quick rev I know we're talking while you're watching, but if you just watch this clip, my Forge Shadows just saved my life here, okay? I would have been dead, wasn't paying attention, would have been dead. On top of that, just like in this example here, being able to climb very quickly and easily with Rev is phenomenal. You catch people off guard all the time. I don't know what happened. I'm pretty sure this guy was wall hacking. You're going to see here in a second. I just take an substantial amount of damage, and I wasn't doing anything. I didn't even look at him until I decided to shoot him. So how they flicked me so quick is BS, and you know it's BS, so do I. On top of that, if you feel you are in lobbies that are really challenging and there's a lot of hackers, they don't like Rev. See, oh, we put a popped our ultimate, but here we are. We're dead. But good thing is our lifeline has a gold knock, and we're getting Rez back to full health. But overall, I will say this, since I picked up Rev in around the plat 2 range this season, which is pretty challenging to be honest if you're solo queuing, I found it much more successful because I was able to stay alive a lot longer in team fights. On top of that, the game is very quick with the third parties and you can get in and out of every fight you need very quickly with Rev. I think he is probably towards one of the top solo queue tier lists in my opinion just because he provides a whole lot of mobility and survivability and both are very important solo queues especially if your teammates do not have Mikey phones.